be be prepared like what like the scouts communicate to connect connect with people connect the dots you need that quiet confidence you don't need to blow 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 and people will say in those days we were told that uh, you need to be seen and not heard but people are seen more now uh, i heard more than being seen you don't have to do but whatever it is have that confidence but don't blow it What are, what are those vision? Vision about where you want to be, where you are taking your team, where you are taking your organization. So what do you need to do? You need to learn more. You need to do what you call continuous and never ending improvement. Understand how others experience you. Always have somebody that will be in the crowd not necessarily the crowd within your team that will tell you, oh, guy, you have done well. Not a sickle fan, please. Somebody that will tell you, oh, we need to have done this, we need to have done that. Hone or build your communication skills. Hone or build. Beatrice or YDG, please mute yourself. Hone or build your communication skills because at any point in time, with a doctoral fellow, Beatrice, mute yourself. Thank you. You. I say with a doctoral fellow, people will want to say, who, who is that person? What did he say? What has he said? And you know, these are some of the things. You can't just have that. Don't just wear the gown and feel, oh, I'm there and all those things. You need to work on yourself. Become an excellent listener. That is why God gave us two ears and one mouth to listen more and talk less. So, and in those days we used to say, don't put your brain uh, don't put your mouth into motion before you put your brain into gear. Remember, think, listen, because some of us, we are prompted, oh, let me say, just listen. The good part is yet to come. The good part is yet to come. Because if you don't, with a doctoral question, <laughs> with a doctoral fellow, if you don't get it right, people will say, what what type of fellow is that? What type of doctor fellow? So somebody has a question. He said, my question is on emotion. In a situation where people working under you are hell-bent on continuous error, what do you do? They are not hell-bent on continuous error. There must be something that is making them to be hell-bent. Because if they know that if the system collapses, their own Gary will also be affected. So let's look at it. Look beyond. You know, there's what we call in in, in uh, HR peer peer activity. Get their peer to look at it. Maybe there are some people in there that can talk to them. Because if you bring somebody from the top, they just your guy at the top. They may not want to listen. Use their own peer, people of the same to penetrate. It's, it's, what, it's what you call, that is why the English people, they call it divide and rule. You are not dividing them, but get somebody that will help you to get to the root cause of where they are hell bent in getting things, not getting things done. So it's up to you, the root cause of whatever, the root cause analysis of why are they not doing what they're expected to do. Have you been able to sit them down? And that is why we say as leaders, we need to do what? You need to coach, you need to mentor, and you need to counsel. These are some of the tools that we can use in getting our people to work. So cultivate your network and build political savvy team. Political, some of us say, ah, I don't want to play politics in the workplace. Politics is part of us. Politics is in the home. Politics in the workplace. You cannot run away from it. We need to work on how do you get these people. When a mistake is repeated more than once, it is not, it is not a decision. Yes, 
have you been able to? That is, uh, is still Igalo that is telling me, Igalo of an age home, is still saying that when a mistake is repeated more than once, have you trained them? Have you discussed with them? There are different ways, like our native people always say that there are different ways of killing a rat. So you need to be able to look at it. What can you do? So and Alice said, uh, has this, she, say, she says, my question is when you just got a job and you do some mistakes in some areas and your boss talks to you the way he or she was not supposed to talk, what do you do as your boss? That is what we call when we were, when I was in service, we were told that learning to manage your boss. What to do, your boss will also go for training. At the same yeah, time, if, if your boss has not gone for training, what do you do at that instance? He's still the boss. You now, yes, the emails will be sent to your, uh, to your, uh, the slides will be sent to your email, please. So what, what we're saying is that when your boss talks to you the way he's not supposed to, since you don't have any other job, you will calm down at that point in time. You will not fight in fire for fire. You will, what you do, take it easy. After which you will go back to him, okay? He's not mad. Even if you woke up on the other side of the bed, Okay, like some of us will always say that we woke up on the on the other side of the bed. So we I don't know what the other side of the bed is, but for whatever it is, is the boss is still in charge. He's going to do our uh, performance appraisal after. He's going to do our performance appraisal. He's going to talk to people. He'll be the one to. So what you do, people will say, ah, me, I will not take it to. Ah, da, da, da. Don't mind them. They will take it more than that. So what you do, if he talks to you the way he's not supposed to calm down, after which you go knock on his door. You go knock on his door and you tell him, okay, I didn't like the way you spoke with me. You know, that is part of what we call communication skills. The guy, your boss needs to go on communication uh, skills program in order to know. Because in, in even in the native way and the, the, the English way, there is what we call, sorry has both male and female. Is the way you say it that will make someone to know whether you are utterly sorry or you are just lip service sorry. So it's very important. It's up to you. Don't play in fire for fire. Just make sure you go to him later. If he doesn't want to see you, not almost immediately because it may still be boiling. That is managing your emotions. Managing your emotions. You don't let anybody get under your skin unless you allow them. Okay? So. Cultivate your network, develop, a, build political service team and work within the team. Get those who will help us to get there. Learn to operate effectively under stress. You see, I, I don't know where I went. Okay, that was when we, were, we started learning how to use the, the multimedia. There was one day the multimedia crashed on us, on me. And everybody thought, oh, I was going to break and whatever. I just went to my notes then and I started talking. Some of them came back to me and said, Madam, you didn't, you were not flustered. I said, Why should I? Why should I? That time I used and learned how to manage my emotions, manage stress and everything. But as we age, you know, we fret. But <laughs> I don't think I could go back to that level. Any small thing, I, I get jolted. But for whatever it is, I still manage my stress. You need to learn to work effectively, operate effectively under stress, okay? Because stress, there are some things that are, there's some stress that are good, but there are some stressors that are on the negative side, they will kill the person faster. So make sure your appearance is not a distraction. You see, some of us, we are very glamorous. Some of us, we don't want to be caught on our ways, but as we're saying, you dress for the occasion. A doctoral fellow, please, Never, ever be caught on our ways. Never. I'm not saying you should go and break the central bank. Anyway, they are changing the Naira self. So you don't have to break into the central bank to, to buy something expensive. I tell you, when I was coming up in uh, in life and in uh, my profession, some of us used to go to Bendal Select grade one now and go dress up, dress very well. 
So I'm not saying that at this level we should go for uh, bend down select grade one, but for whatever it is worth, we need to we need to dress well, not glamorous, nothing. Don't break the central bank, but please be good enough that at any point in time, I, I have I have um, issues with some of my my family members when they're going out. I said, won't you iron? They say, Mama, don't worry. I mean, the, when I come out of the car, the dress will have straightened out. I said, this dress will not straighten out. And supposing you move from wherever you are going to another place and they, they greet your driver well. You know, <laughs> when I was in service, there were, there were some drivers, even when they were not given the, the, the suit that time, they were given uniform and whatever. Yes, even that their uniform was good. They had tie in it and everything. They used to call themselves pilots. So when they go out with some of the the the, the senior colleagues, what do they do? They will it 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 happened. They will address the driver, sir, and tell the other, please wait. And the driver will be shaking. That is my organ that you say should wait me. I'm just the driver. I'm the pilot. I just brought the files. So they would. Be, so we used to laugh at them. That please let the total packaging. What is here? and your outlook be good enough. So now, how do you act? There are three pillars of executive presence, managing yourself, how to act, how to communicate, and your appearance. Very, very authentic. Very, very, because you may not have a second chance to undo the first impression. So learn to connect well, motivate and inspire people to a common goal. So now let's quickly look at the eight traits. What are those things, those traits that I can pick or we can pick from uh, the traits of executive presence and see what we need to look at. Your style, confidence, charisma, trustworthiness, relatability. People will want to relate with you because they feel that you have the charisma. You carry that confidence in you. The composure is there. You, they look at you and say, mm, from what that person says, I think that person is, is uh, transparent and you don't talk for too long. You just hit it and you withdraw. Not that there are some people, when they have this doctor, I say, they talk, 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 because they don't want to hear their own voice. They want to talk, 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 talk. One of my friends that went to one conference not too long ago said that that president just likes hearing his voice. He doesn't delegate. He wants to always be there and make people to know that he's the president of the institute. I said, oh, I said, are you telling me? He said, no, 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 not you, madam. You try. Say that person will always want to hear it. So with our doctoral fellow, when you speak, let people listen. They will not only hear, they will listen and go away with something of value. Let your style, whether in terms of communication, in terms of appearance, in terms of whatever you do, be unique. People want to learn from you. When they when you finish whatever you are saying or doing, they will say, I want to be like you. And when people tell me that, I say, no, greater you. you. And they will say, thank you, ma'am. Greater you. So what we need to do is, doctoral fellow, leave it. Do it. Say it. And by the time you say it, people will know that, yes, you did not get it just for fun. It's not just the food. As I said before, food does not make the monk. So what are the benefits of executive presence? One, the people, your people in your team have better morale. There's lower turnover rates if you are leading a group or you are leading an organization. There's higher productivity. They surely like that uh, person that said that the yoga does not uh, talk to her anyhow. So you will now be the one they say, no, it will not stick because I have emotional intelligence. I can manage myself for productivity. And the person we see, the person I've spoken to anyhow is the best of member of my team. So you need to be aware of that. most constant is the only constant thing so demonstrate passion people that is the essence you will demonstrate passion your people will demonstrate passion so think short and long term what you call low hanging fruits what are those things that you can quickly work on that is the essence of someone with doctoral fellow think 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 on your feet 
So I'll be decisive on whatever you are doing, accept change. So what do you need to do for this to be able to benefit from all what you have said, whether within your team or your team members or for the whole organization? First, listen, be present. Two, be present. And what is that? Act. Three, empathize. Put yourself in other people's shoes. Feel how they are feeling. Empathize the way you speak to them, your expression, then your emotion. Show it. And that is the essence of emotional intelligence. And when someone wants to get on your nerves or make you do what you would not want to do. You remember that there's a, those of us that watch cartoon with the children, there's this uh, fantastic four, they call them, and one of them is that uh, that big monster, green, green. You say, you will not like me when I'm angry. Don't get me angry. And he start getting bigger, getting green, getting bigger. And it goes into destruction. And that is the essence that you need to manage. You don't want people like Fight personal gratification. So, emotional uh, leadership and executive presence. Leadership and executive. What is the major difference? One is position. Okay. The other one is your is inferred on you. Like, is is like when you get into a place or you want to start talking, people will, will have already made conclusion that this person has something upstairs the first word or the first sentence from you will make them know that you have the present that is why leadership is about position your positions allow you your position allows you to perform the roles and function of a leader but your presence determines how effective leader you are so presence is what inferred upon you when you get into a place and people now look at you and say oh this is someone whatever you say They've already jumped to conclusion. They are concluding that this person has something to offer. People will want to say, oh, may I have your card? Maybe one thing or the other. So we will now look at it and say, leadership is more of your performance, what you do, then presence is who you are. But you need to marry the two together in order to get the organization to be profitable. You need to get your people to be uh, productive and your team to be able to do well. So that when uh, the chips are down, they will say, our oh, well, God did it, not us. Or you will now turn around and say, we did it and not me. So how do you now define your personal executive presence? One, you need to have a positive mindset. Don't ever look at people and say, there you go. They said, bad you are, bad you always be. That is what psychologists or industrial psychologists will call self-fulfilling prophecy. You have heard something about somebody before and somebody, the person just made something not so bad. And, uh, but based on what you have heard before, say, there you go, he said it. So let's open our minds as when we are talking about executive present so that we'll be able to redirect our focus to help our people to get there. Look at your habit and your background. What do I need to, Is am I the person that has issues? Like that person is saying, maybe because I passed out the first class, that's why I didn't like Is it written on your forehead? No. When you need to be able to do well, please ask for support. Support not necessarily from your associates, but support from someone that will help you to get there. Okay? Somebody that will tell you you are not doing it right. So practice your speaking skills. Observe others from those who hold you in high regard. But who is that? Someday are you still on? Invest in your learning tools. Then join a group. Thank God you are here. You are in the group. And when we are done tomorrow, you'll be joined to the larger group. And you will see so many other people that you can 
relate with and expand your network. Get a coach or a mentor. So left-hand side, creating personal presence. You can get it online, but you may, if they'll give you a part of it free, but you, you have to buy the whole book, okay? On Amazon or somewhere. So it will tell you, how do I create personal presence? Me, me. So we need to look at it. What is now personal presence? You remember, I said it's at the base of the pyramid. After we go to leadership, then after which we go to the executive presence. So personal presence can help you get a date, a meet, a job, or whatever we sell. It can help you lead a meeting, a movement, or whatever. That's you or a nation. So personal presence involves a new character and relationship or know-how. It is not who you are. It is how you are, how you present yourself, how you act, okay? Some people are good at this. Personal presence, they can act it out, but it may not take them to the C-suite. So in essence, executive presence is the level of your ability to lead a group. It is measured by your likelihood, their likelihood to follow you. You see, we are very towards leadership now, your direction and how you are viewed across the team, okay? Because it's not everybody that will follow you. And you may also not necessarily be the leader at that point in time. So putting all this together, as we mentioned in those circles, the eight circles of uh, the traits, you need the confidence, you need the charisma, you need to be trustworthy. People will believe in you. Trustworthiness, relatability, composure, transparency, and authenticity. Are you authentic in whatever you are doing? Do, are, you, do, are you a person of integrity? When you say good morning, do people go to the window to confirm whether it's morning or night? So it's very important. Conciseness, your style, aptitude, professionalism, and technical competence. You need to know. You need to know your onions. You cannot be, you cannot have a doctoral fellow without having the technical knowledge of HR. You need to do that. You need it. So it is very important. How do we now build capability? What does it look like? What is building capability? What does it look like? The future is about nurturing. Nurturing who? Nurturing yourself, nurturing the people around you, developing your leadership skills, in, developing leadership skills in everyone. That when you are not there, who takes over? Okay, there is a leadership pipeline with you. Does the pipeline get blocked? Or you put the ladder there against the wall. When you climb, you remove the ladder up or you throw it down for others to come or you leave it there for others to come and get there. Provide an enabling environment, be flexible and make sure that change is always there. So with you, where does it start? Where does executive presence start? How do you build your capacity? Where does it start? It starts with you. You have to make up your mind that, yes, I need to be there. In the classroom, like what we are now, okay? Learning, analyzing myself, doing a thought analysis of myself. And I'll say, what do I need to do? In the classroom, in the workplace, leadership attitude, behaviors, and quality, and staying ahead of the game, okay? Be ahead. Let them be the... Let your team members look at you and see this is someone that we need to follow. So how do I now master this? One, people sure I should develop what to call a trust-based relationship. People should trust me. If I tell them to close their eyes and jump, they will jump because they know Mrs. Iwe will not lead us astray. She's done it before, she will do it again. And that is where the Joe Harry window comes in. So then how do I now master this? I need to work with teams. I need to engage them. I need to give them the power. I don't have to hold on and say, without me, the team will crash. No, in spite of you, the team will continue. So we also need to inspire others, inspire them that they too can be on this seat of leadership and they need to do one or two things in order to get there. So, and one of the things that they need to do is be able to develop their personal presence. Remember, we said a trust-based relationship, a trust-based relationship. And what is that trust-based relationship? 
look at this. This is what we call the universal principle of trust. They say, why do you trust that person? See, the person is honestly honest, honest, honest. Uh, the person is full of respect and uh, I, he respects me and I respect him. He does that and whatever. The person is fair, he's person of considered service above self. The person is kind, you know, because that is why when you talk of service above self, some people will say, oh, me first of put everything together, all everything around them. So before they give you anything, they will just take the, the little that they feel they want to give you and you give they give you. So for some people, service first. If anything comes after, fine. So the, yes, please. Regina, did you want to say something? Okay, no. Oh, no, so, sorry. Okay. So service, kindness, and whatever. That is why at times when we talk to people, I'm happy I'm talking to the echelon, the top class now, because when you talk to some people down the line, you say, Madam, what you are saying, go and tell, and tell our guy. They are the ones that need this, not us. I said, but do your bit. Because one day you two will get to that level. You two will be your guy at the top. What are you doing? Preparing yourself for that or guy at the top. So this universal principle is very important. Contribution. Some people are selfish. They don't consider service. What can they get? The pep of the office. So that is what they want. So it's very important. So let's quickly read this story and see the issue of trust. Trust in whatever we do. Trust. Trust is a very important factor for all relationships. When trust is broken, it is the end of the relationship. Lack of trust leads to suspicion. Suspicion generates anger. Anger causes enmity. Enmity may result in separation. A telephone operator told me that one day she received a phone call. She answered, Public Utilities Board. There was silence. She repeated, PUB. There was still no answer. When she was going to cut off the line, she heard the lady's voice. Oh, is that PUB? Sorry, I got the number from my husband's pocket, but I do not know whose number it is without mutual trust. Just imagine what will happen if the couple, what happened to the couple, if the telephone operator answered just hello instead of PUB. So trust determines our character, our competence, and how caring we can be. Because if you don't trust someone, you won't want to show you are competent enough to help that person get there. You won't show that you are caring enough for whatever the person is talking about. And your character will definitely show what the person is, really is. So before we end, I want us to ask me one or two questions before we end this discussion, because we're not ending in the next one minute. But question time, blessing time, experience sharing, more blessing. Some people have typed in questions into the uh, box, but uh, we attended to them earlier. So if you have any experience to share, and if you do just uh, indicate by the digital hand and you want to unmute and let us talk. Because you have been taken from my uh, box of experience. I won't say wealth now. Box of experience. Okay, but you have not given me any. I know people are just willing to say, let's hurry up and go home. No, we are not going home yet. You paid for this and you get the full. Because there will be no refund. There will be no refund. Just so ask questions. Yes, please. Gold thinking. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> you know, people are coming from work. We just came in back from work and rush into the Zoom meeting. That is why, like, let's just use the meeting, guys, and relax. <laughs> relax. <laughs> no, let Madame give you food. I can't see your one that I saw before. I won't mention the name. Let Madame give you food and be munching. It's only me that cannot eat, but I can see your faces now. So it's okay. So you have a question for me? No, you just wanted to share. No, okay, for so now, man. No. Okay, yes, thank ma, you. Yes, ma. Okay, somebody has this. Thanks very much. I have emotional challenges. 
would I have repented? <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Emotional challenges. We can chat after now. Okay. Oh, whoever posted this. So you can chat after now. And we are we let's let's um, let's journey together. Ready to be your coach or counselor when you have issues. Okay. Some of us have gone through that emotional state before, but I'm happy that you said you have repented. Don't go back, don't backslide, as they always say. Well, I'm happy that you know. Okay, there's someone I say. In a situation where you got a job through someone you know, and the person happens to be your superior, and she talks to you in a manner that you, you yourself know that she's not a team leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In this situation, as I said, the boss will always be the boss. The boss will have to learn to be a leader. The boss will have to learn to relate with people. The boss will have to learn to say that, is the same blood like what we are going to talk about tomorrow is the same blood that runs in you that runs in him or her. So some people need more, more training on leadership and management of people. So it's up to you now that you know that who she is, as we said before, you cannot be too beaten down not to manage your own emotions. other person so okay you know that person there may be something there may be something that what you need to do is look at it that for us to be successful as with the first slide that you said you get results through people you get results through connect and it's your people that deliver results so success and people everyone who succeeds in life does so through relationship with people Nothing in this world is ever created, built, produced, amassed, fostered, distributed, or utilized without the support of other people. But some people just feel that they can do it alone. Nobody can do it alone. Nobody can do it alone. It's important that all of us get it right. So what do we need to do? We need to work with people. We need to ensure that If you make them realize that you know better than they do, they won't like it. What they would do is tell you that turn by turn, turn by turn, when it is your turn, do it that way. I worked in the public service. People were brought over and above me in spite of the fact that I had whatever, more than in terms of educational qualification. And they didn't have the experience, but because they knew who to contact. Uh, so what do you do? <laughs> Somebody said, because the MD is not always available. There is always, there will always be, the MD will not always be available. I'll come back to my story. The MD may not always be available, but he has confidence in that person that he has put to carry on while he's not there. So it's up to you to assist the MD, the MD's person to achieve because when this boat sinks, all of us go down. So as I was saying that when I was in service, I had whatever it, I needed to have to start the job on a higher level 
or because I didn't know the people that matter, they put me there. And other people that came after me did not even have what I had. And they put them over and above me. But no, wahala, whatever we did, at the end of the day, I got to this peak of my profession before I retired. And I'm happy that some of them fell by the wayside and whatever, but all the same. What we, I always tell people is that continuously improve yourself there is what we call continuous and never ending improvement. Invest in yourself. Once you invest in yourself, like what we have today or what we're having now, what we're having now is that some people will not invest in themselves. And at the point when the chips are down, I wouldn't want to say it on this platform. When the chips are down, you will see that you will be the one to be ahead. That is the story of me and my profession in the public service. Because I invested in myself. When the time of reckoning came, your sincerely was ahead of those people. But I know in private sector, especially one man business, especially in one man business, they put whoever they want to put there. But if it's even in private sector and the structure is there, Private sector, the structure is there. What they want is profitability. Things should go the way that we make the business to progress. They will not dice with merit. They will not dice with the job unless the MD is the owner of that place or whatever, owner, whatever. So it's very important that whatever it is, do what you have to do. Don't get stressed. Make sure that you bring, anytime you talk, they listen. And they listen for good reason because they believe that something that is coming from here through your mouth is something that they will value. I give you an example of myself. When I was in service, even as a middle-level staff then, I won't say manager, middle-level staff, and we used to have uh, annual event, annual, what do you call it now? Um, annual review meeting. In the midst of over 500, my director general then, whenever I raise my hand, my director general will say, take me CCB. So people that had issues, we say, mama, let's give you, let's give you this thing so that when the DG sees your hand, I said, supposing they take you first, he said, any one of us that they take first. But honestly, when people know that you have something here and something that will come out from here is something that we need, they will need to make the organization go higher than what they're experiencing. Honestly, they will listen. So let's take this. Let's take this. I am a ma, I'm a kind of person that is slow in learning. But my line supervisor in the office is is someone that is fast. She now uses she now uses it as an advantage to insult me. What should I do? Let's talk after now, Uludare. Okay. Let's talk after now. You get my number or from the coordinator or whatever. There are tricks okay, to ma. this. Okay, there okay, are tricks ma. to this. You talk. So then Rashida okay. has this. Ma. There is a conference after. Is there? Is there a conference after the induction? To, you mean the induction of to, tomorrow? No, I mean conference to improve productivity in my career. You will talk to the coordinator. Madam coordinator, or if I look at what Rashida has, is there a conference after the induction, conference to improve productivity in my career? That is for the Institute to decide. We need to have more training on how we can, how can we manage our career? Because as I said before, you need to invest in yourself, invest in yourself, continuous and never ending improvement, continuous and never ending improvement. So now with a doctoral fellow, you need to, I say in HR, you need to use what you call people management. How do I manage people? How do I ensure that people, de people deliver with a doctoral fellow? It's not the end of the world. 
It's not the end of the career. It's just a stepping stone for us to get there. So what do we need to do? You need to use the FISH model. And what is the FISH model? It's a kind of summary of what we have been saying. Feel for others. That is empathize. Involve others. Don't think you know it too much. Know it too, you know it all, sorry. Then speak to and see other people's point of view. So, because some of us, you won't want to speak to them. You say, well, I don't, what does that want to, person want to say? No, it's because he sees himself as a guy. And the other will also tell you turn by turn. Wait for your turn. I waited for mine to hear them out. That means you should listen more. That is why we were told that listening is an intellectual ability. Where, whereas hearing is a biological function. Hear them out, listen to because when you hear them, then you also listen to them. Use what you call people management. People now becomes an acronym for professionalism. How would you showcase yourself as a member of the Chartered Institute of Human Resource Management if you do not show professionalism? If you don't empathize with people, you don't have the emotional management to be able to manage people to get there, then you are not optimistic. Anytime they come to you, you just make them feel. Uh, somebody says, please, man, having too many work experience in the resume, does it affect someone's chances of being hired? Hmm. Eh, not really. Not really. Too many work experience, not really. Your work experience may not be relevant to what they, are, they want to hire. So most times, I'm not trying to tell us to, to do this, but if you can, to help you. So people have two or three resume. They work on them. They keep the original, they pick from there to apply for whatever they want to be hired for. So, but it's up to you. It's up to you. Work on it and you get there. So empathize with your people be optimistic. Don't be a pessimist. Don't look at people from the other side and say, what good will come from that person? And at the same time, don't give room for people that will bring down your vision, your goal in whatever you want to do. Don't let them look at you and say you have nothing up there. One of the things I always advise people to do is try as much as possible. Uh, I won't say journalize, document some of those good things that you are doing, okay? And make sure you bring to the notice or to the knowledge of your supervisor or you, your direct report. Sometimes it's not everything that you throw on the table. That is my story. At one point in time, I thought my, my direct report was my friend. There was a time that I had a brilliant idea and I sold it to her. You know, she carried that and took it to management because, because for those of us at the bottom here, you can't talk without getting to your direct report. So she had the direct one-way traffic to them and it was that. And she sold it and they bought it. It became a big thing in my organization then, but somehow along the line, they sidelined me and she didn't fight for me. It pained me. By the time they brought me on board, like the third generation for that. And I, I, I kicked and I said, I ought to have been part of the first generation, but I was vindicated when some white people came from outside of the country to train us. Yours sincerely was part of the, the uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call those, uh, the wise men? one of the three wise men or the, the 10 wise men. There were over about 150 of us that they started with. I was part of the last 10, 10 men standing and they recommended us. So, but at that point I felt bad because this was my idea, but because they didn't know, you know, when you have inspiration, you have an idea and you have and I, honestly, and I invested in myself. I invested in myself up to the last minute when I left the system, I invested in myself. So what you need to do, be optimistic, invest in yourself and you'll get there. So you need to partner 
don't stay in your cocoon. What you do, partner with people, have good network, and that is the network I'm enjoying in retirement. At times I get overwhelmed by whatever. You need to spread out. You need to connect your team. These people that are having doctoral fellow now, we are a team. See what you can do and you can reach out from one or two people. Be loyal to the system, engage and empower others that are going to carry on the dream when you are no more there. Remember, the rich also cry. The blood that runs in you runs in them and make them realize that we are in this together. We are going to get to that. So develop a new mindset so that when you get develop a new mindset, if you are or got the top in this training, remember, you should ensure you grow your people or they leave the system. So what do you do to do? You need to train, you need to mentor, you need to coach, you need to counsel them in order to identify the performance gap. That individual that is abusing someone that, yo, you are laid back, you don't know that, you don't know this is all that, train me now. I want to do, I want to do well for this organization so that I'll be, I will stay here as a talent and I'll be able to add value to the system. So finally, with a doctoral fellow from Chartered Institute of Human Resources Management, stand tall, believe in yourself because life is about finding yourself first. Then life is also about creating yourself. Drop the excess luggage that is not making you to move. How do you need to? What do you need to do to package yourself to get to that executive presence? Is it my clothing? Is it, is it my communication skill? What is it that I need to do? So that is why I said, stand up to be seen. You don't have to be a giant. You don't have to be a six footer. Somebody of this my size can make waves. Talk to be heard. Talk sense. Sit to be noticed. When you finish talking, when people see you, they will all just look at you. I said, they will keep clapping. They will keep looking at So that is why as we are moving and investing in ourselves, make uh, your, your complimentary card ready because people will ask, who is that person? Because you have reinvented yourself. You are focused on the future. You are working on new skills to get you there. So you need to show that you are better. You have gone higher in our, in, in, in this doctoral fellow that you are getting. So that is why John F. Kennedy said, it is time for a new generation of leadership to cope with new problems and new opportunities. For so there's a new world to be won, a new world, you coming out to connect with people, you coming out to make yourself greater and better. And that is the essence of why we want the doctoral fellow. So question, are you wired to connect? Yes or no? Are you wired to connect? Give me the icon. Yes or no? True, wired to connect, connect because people will get us there. Keep us there. It is why to make huge demand in a moment bargaining. Hmm. Yeah. This is bargaining. <laughs> Thank you, Miriam. Is it why to make huge demands? Mm -hmm. Depending on the organization, if you feel they can, they can afford it, start from somewhere. But in most cases, an organization, it's only Miriam that gave me good, Rashida too. Yes, if you feel the organization can afford higher emolument, start somewhere. But before you start, so look, well, thank you. Before you start bargaining, you should have somebody in the boardroom that will give you, that will have your back. Anna. Thank you. Bimbo, thank you. 
you should have somebody in the boardroom. Let me tell you story, one story before we close. And that is when I was in service, even uh, uh, not even middle level manager, it was in middle, not middle like middle, but not down the line. I was in progress. Kadri, can Kadri. you please close one of your devices? I was in my organization, some people still refer to me. I led the team, the, the what do you call it now? The, the, the thing that you, I've forgotten now. Oh, uh, what's the, uh, when you use, what you use in getting uh, higher emolument? We fought for it in ITF then. I was not too high in the middle level because when you get to middle level, you know, you are not expected to be part of a looter. So what we did was we ensured that the organization could do that. The organization had the money, but they didn't want to give us. So we told them we work for the money. Our union members are the one in account. They told us we can afford to pay. So what did we do? The day we were going to lock the management out at Sikeja area office then, I was Mama Aluta. What did I do? When I said, have somebody in there that will have your back, what did I do? I went one after the other to all the directors that were around us in Lagos. And I told them, I said, sir, condition of service, thank you condition of service. We fought for the better condition of service and they've been improving on it. So I went to all the directors then, have your back or else when they want to hammer you, nobody will fight for you. But I got, that's the question for nobody. So what happened was that I went around and I told them, I said, sir, if we're able to get good condition of service, when you retire, your retirement package will be better. When you retire, your pension will be better. But the way that council was going about it, they were going to add five Kobo, 10 Naira and all. They said, no, we don't want council to take all the money. Send the money back to those who work, the, work for the money. And when they did, the council chairman did not agree, we locked him out. We took our car from him and I didn't do it alone, but I already had my people that went, the frontline people, but I already had, I also had the directors back in. They said, Mrs. Sibe, what do you want us to do? I said, park your cars outside because if you don't and we lock the gates, I, I will not know those who will hold the keys. That I will not know those who will hold the keys. So they now said, okay, so when are you going to do that? We said the, 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 the chairman was coming that the day after. The day before then, I quickly went around. I told them tomorrow, sir, don't park your car inside the compound. And all of them agreed. So when you see that emolument for your people should be increased or whatever, know that the organization can afford it. Don't fight a fight that you already know or a battle that you already lost before you start. So it's very important. So whatever you do, remember, you need to connect. Connect with the people in the boardroom and the people that you are leading. Because as HR, when you face management, you're backing the people. And when you face the people, you're backing management. So you need to be able to connect. So are you wired to connect? Yes, I can see a lot of people that they say they're wired to connect. So in whatever way, in wherever, uh, wherever you find yourself, be kind. I always love to finish my program, uh, my slides with this. Be kind for everyone you meet is carrying a heavy load. So are you ready? To sink, no, nobody wants to swim, yes, and set yourself up for success. But the race is won by those who are prepared to win this laurel.
And the best way to predict the future and work for the future is to invest in it. You need to invest in it and get ready to improve yourself and get there. Because if you don't, then you will not be able to. You will not be able to get there. Thank you, Alice. She said she's wired to connect. Be ready to do that for yourself. Invest in yourself. And that is why we decided that Friday night, and I'm here listening to one woman talking. Yes. Is it worth it? Yes, it is. You need to be able to invest in yourself and get yourself up to that executive presence that we need to do to be able to deliver profitability and productivity teams and ourselves to get there. Thank you for listening as we end the discussion. So for those who want to ask, I have questions here. I have uh, two people in the box. Who is that? Thank you, ma'am. Ready to invest in myself. A woman of purpose. Thank you. I love that. Miriam, I'm good to go. <laughs> yes, ready to swim. Set yourself up for success. Anywhere there's going to be any training on developing self, anything. That is why I said, please remember to Remember to do what? Remember to look at it. Do a self-analysis. Self-analysis. Nobody will do it for you. Self-analysis. And you get there. That's all. Thank you so much, everyone. For those who are going to be with us physical tomorrow, we pray that we all will see at the venue. And... Uh... <laughs> Kadri, thank you. I was a power woman. Yes, then. <laughs> really motivated and ready to invest more in myself. Yeah, thank you, ma'am, for the presentation. It was quite enlightening. Yeah, I'm inspired. That's nice. That's what we want. I, I We like to impact. You too should also impact on people around you. Thank you so much. And I rest my case. If you want to share, let us share. Okay, is our coordinator here, Madam Christopher? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much, ma'am. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, on this note, we want to say good night to everyone. See you tomorrow. And someone say, Can I come? For those of you, that someone say, Can I come with my husband to the venue? Oh. Madam Christopher, please, can, you, can you private chat? If you have my number, please private chat me, please. Okay. Miriam, yeah. you say you can private chat her. Okay. Um, Thank you. On this you note, we want to say good night to everyone. See you tomorrow. For those of you that are coming for the physical induction, it's 10 a.m. The online induction is 11 a.m. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good night. Good night. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Ma. Good night, Rashida. Good night, Ma. I really enjoyed your program. Thank Bye -bye. you. <laughs> God bless you, Ma. And you too, Rashida. Bye. Good night. Bye. Uh, good night, Ma. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, good night. I really enjoyed it. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.